Hey guys, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing part two of this sort of series I have of recommending Christian fantasy books, but these are with magic. Uh, I did a previous video. I will link it down in the description of Christian fantasy books without magic. Um, these have magic in them, whether it's a little or a lot, giant magic systems or just a little sprinkling of it. These all do have a magical element to it, to them. Uh, they also often have like magical creatures and stuff like that but yeah so let's just get into it um I will also specify I forgot to mention the beginning of my other videos so I'll just do it here rather than at the end like I did with that one whatever you know I learned things and yes this hand thing because I like doing that anyways um <laughs> these books are all ones I have read um some of them I have not read the full series of some of them I have so on and so forth. These are just books that I have read and personally really liked. Um, so like there, like I said in my last video, there are probably hundreds more Christian fantasy out there with magic in them. I just personally have not read them. So they will not be in this video, you know, until I read more and then decide to make another video like this. So, um, okay, with that said, the first book I have is the first in a series and that is Martin's Mark by Catherine McKee. This is the first book in the Martin's Mark Epic Fantasy Adventure series. That series title needs to be shortened. Um, I think it's pretty much just known as the Martin's Mark series, so that works. Um, basically with this one, it is a, basically a um, survival story. It's basically medieval fantasy with a survival story. Oh, and also I should have explained, uh, I'm not going to do long drawn out descriptions of these books because I'm terrible at it. I'm just going to give like what we call in the writing world a pitch sentence, which basically is um, you list the basic components of what the story is in the shortest amount of words possible. So this one, medieval fantasy survival story, basically. Um, these royal children get kidnapped by these pirates and there's a shipwreck and then the like slave deckhands of the um pirate ship and help the royal children escape and basically they all just go on the run because there's various people after them and they have to survive and get back to um these the kids uh kingdom that's what i'm looking for words i can say them i do know them um I have read the first book in this series so far. It is going to be, I believe, a four book series. There are currently only three books out. The fourth one, I believe, is still being written. There's also a novella and a short story that go with this series. But um, I have only read the first one so far and I really, really liked it. I found this one at my library, surprisingly, too. That's how I first heard about it. I just saw it on the shelf and I could tell from like the way the cover was and the way the description was and the way her author bio was written. I figured this kind of sounds like it might be a Christian fantasy. So uh, because it's not very clear, but I picked it up and I really enjoyed it. It's written in the same type of vein as like the Blades of Actar and the Ilion Chronicles. So if you like those series, you'll probably like this one. This one I almost put in the non-magical uh list but i do remember there is some kind of healing magic and so this is a very very light magic uh it's pretty much just healing i believe from what i remember i read this book a while ago so i don't remember all the details but i do remember there was some kind of healing magic so that's why it's on this list as opposed to the other one okay uh the next one i have is moonscript by hsj williams this is the first book in a, I do not know how long the series will be. It's called The Kings of S. Elvia. Um, and this is basically, uh, how do I describe this? It's basically Tolkien's elves in a kind of allegorical Christian setting. And this elf prince, he, Aarons, he has been, he was kidnapped at a young age and locked away in this dark kingdom. He is rescued by these, just a mis band of misfits, basically. Um, and they're basically help, trying to help him heal while he thinks he deserves the darkness and is struggling. And it's just basically their journey and he's trying to heal and all the epicness from it. This is a very, very beautiful book, Inside and Out. I, I just love it. Um, it's told in a very like storytelling format and it very much is reminiscent of like Lord of the Rings um, in the way it's written but more modern so it you know it isn't like heavy on 
tons of description that you feel like you're slogging through. Sorry, Lord of the Rings fans, but I do have a problem with that. Um, but yeah, this is a similar vein. Uh, there is also a novella out now that follows one of the side characters. It is called, uh, let's see, hopefully I get this right, Crown of Sand and Sea, I believe it is. If it's not, it's Crown of Sea and Sand. I'm pretty sure it's Sand and Sea. That sounds better. Um, yeah, that was just released. I have not read the novella yet, but um, yeah, I really, really hope to soon. And I do not know how long this series will be, but... This one wraps up very well. You can pretty much just read this as a standalone. So, yeah. Uh, okay, let's see. The next one on the list I do not have the books for or a picture of, so I apologize for that. Um, and it is The Blood of Kings Trilogy by Jill Williamson. The very first book is called By Darkness Hid. It is um, medieval fantasy, and basically where you follow this character, he is a slave in his kingdom, and... But he is offered the chance to be trained as a squire, even though, by this night, even though it's illegal. And, but the only problem he's having is that he keeps hearing voices in his head that are not his. Um, we also, in that series, we also follow a girl who is, she's pretending to be a boy because of reasons I have forgotten. I think somebody wants to force her to marry him and she's not going to, or something like that. I, I forget the whole reasoning. I think it's something about marriage. But anyways, she is hiding as a boy, um, and she also has this ability of hearing basically voices in her head. Basically, she knows what it is though, and it's basically telepathy. Um, it's a base, basic form of telepathy, not telepathy, telepathy, uh, where people of a certain bloodline can talk to each other in their heads. And, yeah, it's just their adventure. Um, there's like people trying to take over this kingdom. There are people who have taken over this kingdom who don't need to be in charge. There's like hidden secrets and stuff. I read this series a long time ago. Um, it was one of the very first Christian fantasy series I ever read. Um, I do remember liking it. I don't remember details though. So um, I know it's a very beloved series. It's one of this author's very popular series. Um, I do want to reread this one again in the near future, but I have not read it in a while. But I do remember fairly enjoying it when I did read it. Okay, the next one is kind of a three series in one. I'll explain in a minute what I mean by that. And that is the Dragons in Our Midst series by Brian Davis. Also the two series that connect with this one are The Oracles of Fire and The Children of the Bard. Um, yeah, this is basically epic fantasy where these children are half dragon. They have dragon characteristics. And it's also mixed with King Arthur lore. There's some science stuff thrown in there. There's also portals into other worlds. And also in the Oracles of Fire series, we also go back into biblical history with mix of dragons, but with fantastical elements and yeah, and it's just it's just a whole bunch of crazy. And in Children of the Bard series, which is a the sequel series to this one, we basically follow the same characters with the whole magic and stuff like that, but also with portals and also we're dealing with the end of the world and the apocalypse and like the end times and stuff. So basically this series has everything. <laughs> um yeah, this is the first series the author ever wrote, Dragons in Our Midst. Uh, this is his first book ever. It does read like a first novel. I warn you of that. So if you're uncertain, if you try this series and you're uncertain after the first book, I would say give the second book, The Candlestone, a try as well. Um, because I wasn't so sure when I first read this book. Like, I'm not so sure about this. But I read the second book, which is The Candlestone in this series. And I really loved that one. That's when I just continued the rest of them. Loved the rest of the books in this series. Um, the three-on-one connection is basically Dragons in Our Midst is the first series. Oracles of Fire is the second series that follows the events after the end of this series. Um, but the very first book, which is Eye of the Oracle... It is basically a prequel to this one because we go way back in biblical times and then catch up to this timeline. So that can like be read first. I didn't read them. I just read each series, but it can be. The author does have an explanation in the very beginning of like how you can read it in the Oracles of Fire series. It's not in this one. Um, I apologize if this is very confusing. But anyways, and Children of the Bard is the series that follows Oracles of Fire because you're following these characters' children plus them as adults. 
So yeah, it's a very long convoluted type thing, but they're all really, really good. I really love Brian Davis's writing and just the intricacies he puts into his books without it being preachy or weird. And just how he makes his characters so lovable yet so flawed that sometimes you just want to strangle them because of the stupid things they're doing, but it's like, it also makes sense. I don't know, I just really love his writing and I really love this series. But yes, if you try Raising Dragons and you're not sure about it, try The Candlestone and then make your decision on whether you want to finish the series or not. Okay, um, the next one I also don't have a picture of. I apologize, that is Heartless by Anne Elizabeth Stingle. Um, this is the first book in a series, technically, The Tales of Goldstone Wood. I have read the whole series. The thing is, I didn't like the rest of the books. Um, I think there's six or seven books in total, uh, along with a couple of novellas, but I did not like them, so I have not put them on this list. Heartless was the only one I liked, which is the very first book, and you can read it as a standalone. You do not have to read the rest of the books um, to read this one, and it is basically an allegory of Jesus' love for us, and it is so beautiful, and I love it pieces um I just really loved that one and I don't know the rest of the books couldn't compare to it and I just yeah I just really liked that one and the way it just showed everything and it was just really beautiful showing Jesus's love for us and why you know he did what he did and stuff it's just I don't know sometimes it comes across you know sometimes you read it so much in the bible it gets dull but then you read it in a different context, like a book or see it in, see, you know, Sacrificial Love in a movie or something like that. And it just changes the whole meaning of the whole thing for you. And you're just like, wow, that is really powerful. And you never thought of it before because, you know, you read it so much that you just get immune to it, I guess. So, yeah. But really, really love that one. Highly recommend the Heart Heartless. Um, you can try the rest of the series, too, if you like her writing style. I just personally didn't like the books. So, yeah. <clears throat> okay, the next one I have is two other in interconnecting series, um, and that is Dragons of Starlight by Brian Davis and Tales of Starlight by Brian Davis. So these series are interconnected, um, very similar to the Dragons in Our Midst, Oracles of Fire, and Children of the Bard series that he also wrote. He's very into interconnected series, which I like. <laughs> um, this basically, this series, uh, because Starlighter, the first book in the Dragons of Starlight, starts it all, basically, and basically there's these two separate planets, um, and these dragons, long ago, they kidnapped humans and forced them to their planet to become slaves for them, and the humans on the human planet have always just heard myths about it, and there's a bunch of them who um, want to follow the creator's will and find the lost ones, as they call the slaves, and bring them home and you know, take them away from the dragon and tyranny. And then you have, um, so in this book we follow Jason and his friends. They are teenagers in the human planet trying to find slaves and slaves in the dragon planet. And on the dragon planet we're following Corin, who is a slave there, and she just wants freedom for her people. She also is a starlighter. She has magical gifts to basically bring stories to life. Um, yeah, and the connecting series is Tales of Starlight, and this is the adult version. This is young adult, this one's adult version. Um, in this series, we basically parallel the events in Dragons of Starlight, flip the book around the correct way. <laughs> um, we parallel it with this one. Uh, in this series, we follow Jason's older brother, Adrian, and his friend, Marcel, as they basically go to um, the same planet and they're also trying to rescue slaves, but they have a different uh, story because they basically go on different paths than where Jason and his friends go on. And it's a whole giant story of just basically trying to rescue these slaves from the dragons and just things that snowball from there. Um, I have read the Dragons of Starlight series before. I read this. This was also another one of the very, very first Christian fantasy series I read, though technically when I started it from the library, I started with book two because they didn't own book one. So, which was very confusing. I would not recommend it because it just literally jumps in from where we ended in this book. And, I'm, and I was like, okay, I'm just going with it. Um, but yeah, I, I did end up reading this one later because the library finally got it after I read that series. But you know, 
libraries are like that sometimes um but yeah i really enjoyed this one uh again it's one of those where sometimes the characters are so frustrating you want to slap them but you also love them too and uh the dragon world was interesting and just the way he set things up um i would also highly recommend reading tales of starlight because this i have never read tales of starlight before my library only had the first book which i did read that was masters and slayers this is the second book um, which is the only one I currently own and this yeah it, it basically it does I thought it would follow events in here and it does because it does mention uh, several events where you're like oh wait that happened in Starlighter or whatever and basically it's just um, a more intense version of the young adult series because like uh, sometimes they go into more of what the dragons are doing or the brutality of it all but it's never in graphic detail he does have um in the very beginning of the tales of starlight thing he does have like an author's note of like the reading order you can read it in and also like that's the first page um like some content information stuff uh he has put in this series so i thought that was really nice um so yeah um but yeah, it's just, they're really good. Um, I have not finished Tales of Starlight, obviously. This is a trilogy. This is a four series book, series. <laughs> That's a four book series. This is a trilogy. So um, yeah, I have not, I've only read Masters and Slayers so far, but hopefully um, I will read Third Star later very soon as I'm currently rereading this series. And just really love them. Just, yeah, I just really love this author's works. He's definitely, I would say one of my favorite authors. Um, yeah just really love the way he does things okay the um let's see next one that i have is obviously a classic and that is the chronicles of narnia by c.s lewis this is allegorical an allegory of the bible in a fantasy world um i mean pretty much i would hazard a guess and say most everyone knows what this series is about even if you've never seen any of the movies or never read the books you've probably heard about it and you probably know the basic concept of this and yeah, it's a seven book series. This is the whole omnibus edition. And yeah, really enjoy these. I really ought to reread these sometime. I have not read them in a long time. Um, I remember reading them when I was younger and my mom read them aloud to me and my sister, but I haven't read them since. So yeah, I really ought to reread them at some point. I have watched the movies multiple times. I really like the movies too, even if Don Treader kind of went a little bit out um further away than the what the book does i still like it so yeah highly recommend this series <laughs> and in case you're wondering lord of the rings is not on this list because it's technically not christian fantasy yes his faith comes through in what he writes and stuff but he did not ne never marketed it as christian fantasy so that is why i've not included lord of the rings on this list just so you know in case you were wondering um okay the next series i'm going to talk about i do not own and that is the Songkeeper chronicles by jillian Bronte Adams. This is a trilogy, um, and I have only read the first two books, which is Orphan Song and Songkeeper. Uh, the third book is Song of Lyra. Uh, this is basically, uh, let's see, how do I describe this book? It's basically there's a war going on, or there's going to be a war started in this world, and one character, she has the original, she's a songkeeper. She has the song that, like, uh, the god, their version of God in this world had used to create the world or something like that and then she can like it has a lot of power this song and she can like change the course of the war she can heal people she can devastate things um through this power and yeah it's just her and her friends going on this adventure trying to stop this war from happening um I really I did like the first two books um I haven't read the third one because my library doesn't have it and I don't know if I like it enough to want to buy it um, but yeah I do like it um, Jillian d does have a writing style is very similar to like what I would call a modern Tolkien style so if you like that style of writing um, I would recommend checking these books out because that's kind of what I would call her writing style feels like um, in the same vein I also have um, her standalone book, uh, Out of Darkness Rising, I do own this one. Um, this book is currently out of print. I debated putting it on this list, but I decided to anyways, in case you do find it, because it is really good. I actually like this one better than the Songkeeper Chronicles. And this is an, it's a novella. It's an allegory of 
uh, Jesus basically throwing out the serpent and then the serpent deceiving people and basically years later when he when Jesus comes to save us from our sins and it's just it's an allegory of that and it's so beautiful and I love it um, I also really love this cover um, but yes it is currently out of print sadly I think the author has plans to reprint it eventually but currently it's not and yeah I just I really love this book um, really love this story behind it so yeah might be hard to find but if you can find it definitely get it because it's well worth it okay and we're almost done here okay so the next one I have I do not have a picture of or the books and that is the wing feather saga by Andrew Peterson I have only read the first book which is on the edge of the dark sea of darkness um I've only read it this is like a middle grade kind of younger young adult series um and it's basically about this these siblings who um I guess who they just live out with their their mother and their grandfather in this little village and they discover some things that they probably shouldn't have but you know and yeah it's just their adventures from there because these this evil guy who's like a lizard giant lizard um he wants them and they are basically trying now on the run trying to escape this guy the evil people's wanting to capture them and destroy them um for reasons um i enjoyed the first book i felt it was very much set up um and the, the kids did sometimes irritate me a little bit um but not not that much i do plan on continuing the series unfortunately i had started it along with the same time i had started two other series that were really big and also middle grade and middle grade and i don't sometimes get along <laughs> so um i have stopped reading it as of now but i will pick it up again because i do want to see if i want to continue it with the, from the second book it is a i believe a four book series i think there's an a fifth book that's like short stories or something but I'm not really sure I do know there's at least four books um, in the series so yeah I don't have a lot of thoughts on it because I've only read book one and I felt it was very very much set up uh, for the rest of the series but I am definitely willing to try to keep going with it okay um, and the last book that I don't have um, is the Ravenwood saga by Morgan L Bussey basically this one um, mark of the raven is the first book and we follow lady celine in this book she and these other houses in this world they have powers that um basically they're born into they will have a certain power and her family's power is dreamwalking uh but instead of being used for positive her family has been using dreamwalking for generations to assassinate people basically basically the dream assassins they go in to people's dreams and they can kill them or like torture them or get information out of them but most of the time I think they end up just killing them so they're basically dream assassins and then Celine is then told by her mother who is the current like head of their house and stuff she basically tells her she has to kill this guy but then Celine figures out this guy might be the only person who can stop this war and save their world so now she has a choice does she kill him and doom the world or does she save him and doom herself and yeah just things happen from there um it is a, this is a very popular uh series i've noticed in like christian communities and stuff i did really enjoy it um did have a, f a few issues with the way book three ended but uh, I did enjoy it for the most part. Um, I definitely enjoyed, I would say, probably books one and two more than three. But yeah, I really did like it. I liked the powers. Um, I also really like at one point uh, the author, the way she described a s souls in the, because when Celine goes in the dream, she can see the person's soul and the way she saw the, the one guy's soul. And it was just, it was really, really beautiful. And I just really liked the portrayal of it. Um, yeah it was just really beautiful i really loved that one and yeah i would say it's a really good series not a personal favorite of mine but i still really think it's um worth the read and the last one i just threw on here at last minute because i forgot this is actually um marketed so wow sorry words again um as a christian fantasy and that is where giants fall this is a short story anthology of 
written by 14 different authors. There's short stories in here and one of them is mine actually. It's called What the Darkness Fears and this is actually marketed as Christian fantasy. Some of them are more um, allegorically bent towards Christian faith and stuff. Mine does talk about like hope and stuff like that so I did not intend it as a Christian uh, story when I wrote it because I wasn't sure if that's how we were marketing the book at first when I first wrote it. But um, yeah, there are definitely more stories in here that bend more towards a Christian um, like faith and stuff and while other ones have more of a subtle hint towards it. Um, so yeah, I would highly recommend this book and not just because mine's in it. Um, though if you like my story, you know, that would be an added plus. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but definitely recommend this one. All the stories in here are amazing and very, very different from each other. And just, yes, very, very good book. And yeah, that's it. That's the end of my list, at least for now, of uh, Christian fantasy series that I, and standalones that I have. Actually, none of them were standalones. Out of Darkness Rising, I think these two might have been the only standalones. <laughs> Honestly, I think the rest of them were series. Ha! Huh. Well, Moonscript is technically a standalone because there's no other books right now, but whatever. Anyways, all these Christian fantasy stories with magic in them. So yeah, that's pretty much all the ones I've read so far. I'm sure I will do an update of this video at some point um, when I read more. But yeah, um, let me know down below in the comments if you've heard of any of these books or if any of them sound interesting or if you have recommendations of Christian fantasy with magic in them that you would think uh, I or other viewers would like, please list those down below because I'd love to hear from you guys. Always love reading your comments and answering them. And yeah, um, that's all for me for today. So I will see you next time and thanks so much for watching. Bye.